pleasure as always. Oh, the pleasure's all mine, yeah, man. Take a seat. The pleasure today is mine, do you know what I mean? Like yours. I made it my big day, what can I say? Yeah, so yeah, sit down Give now. Give me some skin. Why not? <laughs> I'm a free man, do you know what I mean? Oh, well, I'm a okay. happy man, bursting with joy! Chris! Oh, 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 you're right, I should. <sighs> Sit, relax. I should relax, calm myself and sit. Take a few breaths. <sighs> now, would you like some water? Ugh, no, ice cold, cold. The real thing. No, no, you know you can't have coke. Yeah, I can. Nick, what's wrong with drinking coke? I'm going on tomorrow. Chris, what did I tell you about coke? I'm going home. Chris, come on. You know this. What's wrong with drinking coke? Rots your teeth. No, but yes. And? What else does it do to you? Makes your head explode. It's not good for you, is it? No, it's bad. What's the first thing we like when we came in? No coffee, no coke. No coffee, no coke. That's right. Doesn't do us any good at all. Yeah. Guess it's overexcited. Yeah, yeah, it makes me jumpy. That's right. So, what shall we have instead? What I really like is a snake bite. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> a snake bite. Right. Uh, a cider and red stripe. Uh, uh, Chris, what's what's Chris, what's the rule of alcohol now? Alcohol. Oh, yeah, alcohol. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Uh, you know, it makes you see things. Well, see into the future, maybe. Sometimes, maybe, but. What does it mostly do? It fucks you up. It... Precisely. <laughs> so, how about a glass of nice cool water, eh? Some nice cool water from the... From the thing. Water from the thing? That's cool. Mm. Nice cool water, yes, just let me... No, 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 Christopher, look. <laughs> this is silly. Be my guest. So for ease into it, do you know what I mean? A A doctor, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Well, do you know what I mean? No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. Where's the drugs, man? Ah, the drugs, of course. It's all that in it. Where's the drugs, man? Man, these patients giving me massive big headache. Man, massive big headache. What's in my doctor's back? Give me some smack. Where's some smack? Where's the Tamazee party? This bad nigger patient I got. This bad nigger dude I know. My God, I can't take the pressure. You with me? Well... Yeah, yeah, go on. Typical white doctor. That's how you white doctors speak. Drugs? What drugs? No drugs for you, because you only enjoy it. These are my drugs. Christopher, why do you think you're here? Why am I here? Yes. I'm on. And you've been here a while now, haven't you? Why do you think that is? If you'd only wanted drugs, you wouldn't really be here, would you? You'd be out there, scoring off somebody and going home. I know I would, eh? Hey! hey. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not a drug user, okay? You know, but it doesn't make any sense for anybody to be in here just for the drug. Drugs, as opposed to say, out there, enjoying, enjoying the drugs. My point is, and this is one of the things I want to talk to you about today, you're here to get better, aren't you? Because you've been very poorly, haven't you? I don't know. What? What's going on? I'm going home. You should be happy. I was saying it's all along. There's nothing wrong with me. And now you agree with me. I just, I'm going home, man. It's mad, isn't it? It's bonkers. Mad shit. First thing I said when I walked out, I saw the other geezers. I looked at them and I was like, fuck this. These people are insane. Get me out of here. I don't know why I'm here. These people are nuts, man. Yeah. They're all nuts. Crazy people here, yeah. Crazy, oh. man. Radio, radio. <laughs> You don't actually use the term crazy. You just said it. I know I just said it, but I shouldn't have. I was, I was humoring, you know, it's a no. But you just said it. I know I did, but you see my point. You said it first! I know, okay, Christopher, look. There are things we, there are terms we use which people used to use all the time. Terms which used to be inoffensive, but things are just a little bit different now, aren't they? Certain words, for example, people used to use schizophrenic all the time. Such and such is schizophrenic, okay? used to denote a split personality. But we know now that schizophrenia doesn't mean that at all. <laughs> split personality? Meaningless, okay? So, it's an unhelpful term. It's inaccurate. What we call a misnomer. 
you were diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Okay? Keyword, borderline. Because clinically speaking, you're on the border between neurotic and sad. What, just on the border? Yes, and that's a very useful term, isn't it? Because if people get the word wrong, how can they get the person right? So we try to do this. We try to explain. Which is one of the things I want to talk to you about today. Your diagnosis. This term, this label, and what it means, because, well, I'm beginning to think now about, well, it's a little... It's a little oh, come on, you've made your point! I said I'm sorry! What do you want? Blood? You wanted to see me. Ah, yes, Dr. Smith, come in. Hi. How's tricks? I'm fine, how are you? I don't believe I've thanked you for that stupendous meal on Saturday. The food? Hang on to that woman, Bruce. You'll live to 103. The only woman I know with the audacity to pull off a fondue, I thought. Any minute now, she'll be climbing into her caftan. It was well shred it. <laughs> She's on toast, the very thing. I know it's not what you're used to. On the contrary, it was just the ticket. Took me back to my student days. Tie that woman to the nearest bed and inseminate her at once. Doctor. Breathe. Lots of little bruises. Doctor. Hello. You remember Christopher? Chris, do you remember Dr. Smith? Senior consultant. Mm -mm. Warning, 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 alien life form approaching Will Robinson. Warning, <laughs> warning, yeah. Warning, warning, alien life form. Let's not get yeah. too distracted. Oh. I've asked Dr. Smith to sit in today. Yes, that's right. I've just got myself a nice cup of coffee and I'll work in the corner. Coffee? You won't even know I'm here. She's got coffee! There's plenty of water in oh, there. Wow. That's not for you. Oh, come on, man, coffee! No coffee, no coke. I'm sorry, you know yeah, why. I'm going out tomorrow. I'm getting out packed. I'm ready to go. Man has a point. Give him some coffee. I haven't even touched it. Hey, man. Coffee's got caffeine. What do you do that for? If this isn't a good time. No, no, no. It's perfect time. I wanted you to see this. I'm packed, man. I'm ready to go. Who said you could pack? No, man. I just did it. Who are you? Think I've pinched the towels and some stationery? Because I'm. I'm no. I'm no. No. Because I'm. Because no. I'm a brother. Paranoia. Nihilism. Persecution. Because I'm an opportunity. No, 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 no. You always say that, and I always tell you the same thing. No. Doctor Smith. Would you just make up your mind before I go star staring bananas? Bats are like 70. Christopher. Don't Christopher me, man. What's if a cop yet? Yeah, he thinks he's Batman. You know that's not the way we speak to consultants. He's giving me the fear. Christopher, calm down. Now you are acting like a... Oh, what? Oh, what? Go on, say it. An opportunity nigger. But, yes, okay, frankly, you are. And that's not what we do, is it, eh? And when you get out of here, and you start staring at people like that, what are they going to think, oh, eh? Frick, you know. They're going to think you're a, a, a lovely teen nigger. That's what they'll think. Kissing your teeth. It's not you. It's, not, it's silly. You're not some type of yardy. Are you telling me who I am? You're telling me who I am? No, I'm... That's wrong, that is. <laughs> that's rich. Now I've got an identity crisis. Mm, lovely teeth. This is strictly speaking an epithet we use. Learned unresponsiveness, disorganized behavior, declining social skills. So, you, okay? look around you. Who isn't unresponsive and disorganized with declining social skills, eh? <laughs> it's normal. Could we have a quiet break? Hey, you. I'm talking to you. When I get out of here, people won't think nothing because I'll be gone, boy. I'm going far away where I can get some peace and quiet. No people, no cars, no pollution, no plates flying overhead like fruit flies. No cities, no road work, no construction work, no people sweating under my head, through the floor, all over the walls, rowing all day and night. Nothing. What you looking at? Think I'm gonna eat you? My dude still looking on her face. Nobody's looking at you funny, Chris. She is. Well, are you surprised? Eh? Look at yourself. Now just sit down and relax. Of course people stare at you when you act like this. You know what it's like. Overbearing nervous system. Can't look us in the eye. Thinks we're stirring at him. We are. I'm gone. Oh yes. Somewhere hot. Believe. Christopher, would you mind waiting in that room for just two minutes? Please. I'd really appreciate it. Just go through that door. Alright, I hope you know what you're doing. How do you mean? I hope you're not gonna let her talk you into anything. I hope you're not gonna go change your mind on me, because my twenty-eight yeah, Chris, my twenty-eight yeah, Chris, My twenty-eight days are up, man! They're up! Okay. Believe. Okay, thank you. His 28 days are up, he's responded to treatment, and now he's going home, right? I want a section three on him. Take a deep breath and forget you even thought of it. But... 
you are doing what is right, what is just and textbook medically beneficial. And apart from anything else, we don't have the bed. I'm really quite Those concerned. beds are prioritized for emergency admissions and level ones only. Otherwise, we'll wind up with a hospital full of long-term chronic mental patients hurtling about on trolleys. It'll be like the wacky races. <laughs> Look. There'd be a scandal. They'd have my ass out of here faster than his, and yours would be next. That's right. I'll never make professor. And you'll never make your specialist registrar training. And how long did you study for that? Six years? You have to play the game. Play the game? Look, if you keep your nose clean and you enjoy psychiatry, you'll almost certainly become a consultant. But you can't afford to be indecisive about this. They'll close the hospital down. Nobody's going to close the hospital down because it's one section three, are they? Do you think? Yes, perhaps. Really? Follow the path of least resistance. But I can't justify throwing him out on the basis of base. You're not throwing him out. You're giving this man his freedom. You're releasing him to the bosom of his community. He's going back to his people. He doesn't have any people. He doesn't have a life. That's a matter of conjecture. He lives on the YCT estate. Sure, he's black, but it's a predominantly Jamaican community. He didn't grow up there, and he hates it. Where did he grow up? All over the place. What about family? He must have a mother. He doesn't seem to be in contact with her anymore. Are you proposing to section this man again on the basis that he's what? Lonely. It'll do his head in. It'll do his head in if you section him again. He isn't ready to go. He's unstable. You heard him. Borderline personality disorder. On the border of neurotic and psychotic. He was highly animated, shouting, stirring. You would shout and stare if you were on the border of neurotic and psychotic. And you can add reckless, impulsive, prone to extreme behavior, problems handling money, family, sex, relationships, alcohol, a fundamental inability to practically handle everything that makes us human. See, technically he's not that mentally ill. We can't keep him here. It's ugly, but it's right. He's not that mentally ill. Are you joking? Christopher is a schizophrenic. No, he's BPD. If you section through him, I can keep him here until he's properly diagnosed. No, absolutely not. He's a type 1 schizophrenic with paranoid tendencies, including- How does BPD with paranoia sound? Stick to the ICD-10 classification. You love the ICD-10, don't you? All the different euphemisms for he's nuts, without actually having to admit he's nuts. Okay, BPD and a bit nuts. The doctor. Eccentric. Please. Was he squiffy? Squiffy. Squiffy, intoxicated when he was sexual. <laughs> yes, I think. BPD with alcoholism, it's a movable feast. What? No, it's not. It's a matter of opinion. It's semantics. And right now, doctor, my semantics are better than yours. So I win. I can't live with that diagnosis. You don't have to. Has he tried to harm himself or anybody else? Of course not. Well, you can't keep him in here unless he's dangerous. Is he a danger to himself or the community is what I'm getting at. <laughs> he did. He was, he was in the market doing, doing, I don't know, something funny. He was in the market doing something funny. Funny strange or funny haha? It's in the file. Read the file. Why can't you just tell me? I'd rather not. Why not? I'd just rather not. It's rather delicate. Well, if you're going to be coy about it. I just don't think it's relevant. We can't keep him in here unless he's dangerous. I think he's becoming depressed. I'm becoming depressed now. Look, assign a community psychiatric nurse and treat him in the home. We're more comfortable, he's more comfortable, it's less of a drain on resources, and the authority is ecstatic. Okay. In the perfect world, forgetting about resources, forgetting about budgetary constraints, say we've got Unlimited bets. What would you do then? In a perfect world, I'd send him home with freaking bells on his head and spread a little happiness. Why the hell not? Look, there's nothing wrong with your patient, Bruce. He may be a bit jumpy, a bit OTT, a bit frost. But hey, maybe that's just what you do where he comes from. Where he comes from? His community. What exactly are you trying to say? I'm not saying anything. Where he comes from? No, no, no. Go on, what are you saying? I'm not saying anything. Go on, what are you saying? Nothing! I'm only saying, maybe, maybe, maybe it's just you. Maybe you just make him nervous. What? He's a paranoid schizophrenic. Allegedly. This is ridiculous. We spend our lives asking whether or not this or that person is to be judged normal, is to be judged a human, and we blindly assume that we know what normal is, what human is. Maybe he is more human than us. Maybe we're the sick ones. Maybe this is utter horseshit. I'm sorry, Dr. Smith, but which, which existential novelist said that, eh? 
I mean, you'll be quoting R.D. Lang next. That was R.D. Lang. <laughs> R.D. Lang was a madman. They don't come any fruits here. Well, with respect, Doctor, maybe it's time you grew up it, loosen up, get your head out of your textbooks, and learn a little bit about humanity. As the poet once said, human is not a noun, it's a verb. Don't be so old-fashioned. If I let him out, he will succumb to the most horrifying symptoms of schizophrenia and be unmedicated. If you detain this man any longer, he will become institutionalized. You can come back in now, Christopher. We've finished our little chat. There, here's a good fellow. Want anything? Thirsty? That was in a hollow parable. I've been drunk with my belief. I've been trying to walk it off. Try not to. Oh, let him walk if he wants to. Now, when were you planning on leaving us? 24 hours. Morning, evening. I've got my lunch. And you have somewhere to go, I take it. Council accommodation. Marvelous. Oh, only I don't go there. Oh? I get stopped a lot there. That's why I was caught in the market. You know, because police are all talking to each other on the walkie talkies. They came to get me at the market. Yes, why, why were they at? What do you think, man? I'm asking you. Because they're fascist pigs, it's obvious. <clears throat> well, I think I've pretty much finished here, Dr. Flaherty. You're finished? Yes, quite finished. It's been nice talking to you, Christopher. I sincerely hope I never have to clap eyes on you again. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'd just, I'd like you to stay a while while I ask a few more questions. What sort of questions? Uh, routine, my assessment says. Okay, Christopher, a couple questions. Shoot. What's in the fruit? How do you mean? What fruit do you see in the fruit bowl? Oranges. Good. Oranges. What sort of oranges? Just oranges. Yes, but what colour are the oranges? Do you remember what you told me yesterday? Blue. Blue oranges? Yep. Really? Bright blue. Feel. Cool. See so what's on the inside. Christopher, what colour is it on the inside? Blue. So, the skin is blue. And even on the inside, it's blue. Yep, bright blue. Don't eat it, it's a, it's a bad orange. I mean, God, what is it? Black magic? Voodoo, voodoo, oh no, spooky. Spooky. Yikes. Yikes, indeed. Uh, my dad, it's his favourite fruit. Orange orange yourself. You know Who I mean? is your father? I mean. What's his name? I already told you. Yes, but tell me again, in front of Rob. Why? I just, please, answer me this. It's a simple question. It sounds silly. <coughs> Chris, it's, it's embarrassing. For Christ's sake. How on, Chris, how on God's earth can you honestly tell me I can tell you that without you thinking I'm off the stick? Christopher, please. My father, my dad, was a very important man. Believe it or not, my dad was formerly Ugandan president, His Excellency Idi Amin. Fabulous. And if he knew where I was, I would not want to be you right now. Yeah, Chris. Because the man does not fuck about. Do you understand what I'm saying? Christopher, he will okay. digest you. He will juice you up and squirt you out of his arse into the sewers for the bats and the fish to see. They don't call him the butcher of the bush for nothing. Believe. Fine. Okay. What else do you want to know? Well, I... He's got 43 children and 100 grandchildren. He's a family man. <laughs> his dad's Chevrolet and got talent for the accordion. He, she gave, the, uh, he gave my mother out of Zaire because she was, you know, she was a foreigner. He gives out all the foreigners. Uh, I, so I'm not proud of her or anything, it's just how he was. You know, old-fashioned like. Your mother's from Zaire, you say? <sighs> you don't believe me, do you? When was this? 1974, uh, before I was born. Before you were born? I was conceived. You know, that's why she had to go. We couldn't bother a foreigner. It's obvious. I think we're finished for today, Christopher. We finished? Oh, well, yes. What did I say? Absolutely nothing. Did I pass? You have nothing to worry about. I'm still going home, right? Yes. I'm still going home, yeah? Uh, I'm still going home, right? Christopher, you can go back to your ward now. I'm going home. I'm going home, right? I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. Happy? Le Mont Debut Commune en Orange. What? It's a poem by Paul Eluard. He was a French surrealist. You don't say. The world is as blue as an orange. It's an analogy. Classic hallucinatory behavior. 
Is he hearing things? Auditory hallucinations? Well, Jets. Is he seeing things other than blue-orange? Isn't this enough? Neurotics do it all the time. They see what they want to see, not what they really see. Maybe he knows the poem. Are you joking? <laughs> Entirely serious. His mother could have read it to him as a child. It planted an image in his mind. You are joking. There's even a Tintin book, Tintin and the Blue Oranges. It's about a mad professor who grows an orange in the Sahara. Only problem is, it's bright blue and tastes salty. Tintin was banned in the Belgian Congo because they thought he was a communist. But in colonial Uganda, the notoriety no doubt made Tintin a must-read for the bourgeoisie. He was a cultural icon, a symbol of middle-class insurrection. A delusion waiting to happen. BPD with delusion. Are you making this up? Surely you must agree there's something terribly wrong here. Surely we have responsibility we have to- responsibility to let him out, prescribe medication, and see if he ends He team. won't take medication, you know that. They never do. Now it's quite possible he's heard some family story handed down through the generations. Maybe Idi Amin came to the village, da 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 just Chinese whispers. It's gathered importance, but now he believes this. Seriously, I think there's something in it. So, while he's got a delusion about a Ugandan dictator who believes his father, you're saying he's not sick. It's a cultural thing handed down for generations. I'm saying he's not mad. There's a difference. Do you know what happened to his mother after the military coup? Whether she was raped by them or by Idi Amin himself? She could have been a journalist or a cook at the state house for all you know. Have you asked her? That is not possible. Why not? We can't seem to trace her. Find her. It might not all be true, but then again it might. Okay. Say it is true. It's all true. Christopher is Idi Amin's son. <coughs> and he's his son. Well then, kind of blows your theory out of the water, doesn't it, Doctor? The point is, this is my province, Doctor. I am, as they say, a senior consultant, an expert. I'm not here to be bounced off. I'm here because I know. Yes, but with the greatest respect, Dr. Smith, you don't. He's my patient, not yours. However much you want to be We can theory. skin this cat as artfully as we like, but in the opinion of this highly experienced department head, Dr. Flaherty, what we have here is no beds, and more importantly, a patient who has no need of a bed. But what you're saying, what you're really saying is that Christopher can't determine between realistic and utterly unrealistic notions because, what? Well, because he's... BPD, case closed. Because he's... BPD, goodbye, Dr. Because he's black. Isn't it? I'm saying where he comes from is certainly not an unrealistic notion. But he comes from Shepherd Bush. He sees himself as African. His origins are in Africa. His origins are in Africa. May I remind you that you are under my supervision. You are my subordinate. And your tone is beginning to sound dangerously insubordinate, if not nakedly insulting. I'm sorry, but... Do you know what most young, smart doctors would do to have me as their consultant? <laughs> Now, do you want me to recommend your consultancy at this hospital, or don't you? Of course. Then act like a professional. Act like a royal representative of the Royal College of Psychiatry. But I'm not a representative. Well, do you want to be? Hmm? Now, gather yourself up. Try not to be so wet behind the ears. Otherwise, I'm taking you off this case. You can't take me off this case. I'll assign a CPN and discharge him myself. If you do that, I'll appeal to the authority. I am the authority, just between you and me. Christopher is a sick man. Why won't you listen to me? Listen to you! It's not my job to listen to you! It's your job to- oh, for God's sakes, look! Let me join up some of the dots for you. Schizophrenia is the worst pariah. It's one of the last greatest taboos. It scares people, it depresses them. They don't want to understand it. It isn't treatable with wondrous glamour drugs like Prozac or Viagra. It isn't newsworthy. Organized crime, wife beaters, junkies, they get better press. But schizophrenia, my friend, just isn't in the phone books. Then we must change that. Change? Please don't be so naive. The authority, the board, they will undermine you at every turn, and then they will screw you. Now, I'm not trying to be the big bad wolf here. I certainly don't want to release Christopher unless he's ready. I care. But one can care too much. One can have too much empathy. Now. Let me conduct my own assessment. We'll reconvene in the morning. 
I promise I won't be partisan. I'm on your side. 